Welcome back. In this section, you're going to look at instance management. So in this section, you're going to look at instance management. Remember, our software has two things, the instance and the database. Without the instance, we cannot access the database. So we need to pay much attention to the instance. We have seen the previous file, the previous episode. We have seen everything about the storage structures, how we can multiplex, how we can create redo files, how, and so much more. Now in this section, we are going to work with the instance. We needed to first understand those files because they are extremely important for us to understand the instance management. So in this section, we are going to dwell much on the instance. The instance is the gateway, like we said, is the gateway to the database. It is the gate, the goalkeeper. Without the instance, we cannot access anything in the database. So the instance is always shut down and open. Whenever we shut it down, it means we are shutting down the database. Whenever we start it, it means we are opening up the database. So we have two things. Basically, what we are going to focus on in the instance management. How do we start the instance and how do we shut down the instance? Let's begin with the startup process. The startup command is the switch that enables us to start the instance. Whenever the instance is down or the database is down, I will be using these things interchangeably because when the instance is down, it means even the database is down. When the instance is up, it means even the database is up. So the instance, when it is done, we need to start it up. And we start it up using the startup command. We shall see this in action. You have to be an administrator for you to be able to shut down or start up an instance or start up or shut down the database. We go through a process we go through a process for us to be able to start up the instance or the database. And there are three stages that we go through. The first stage is the normal stage. At this stage, the database is down. It's not accessible. We are assuming that the instance is shut down. It is down. Now we are trying to bring it to life. The first stage is the normal stage. With the normal stage, everything is down. But what happens at this stage is the initialization parameter files all the parameter files are loaded into the system you remember the parameter files we covered in the previous episode these are the settings of the database and they are read at this stage because remember they are the different setting they know everything about the database when the initialization parameters are read from the parameter files then the background process starts the background processes start like the ones we saw, the mandatory, and then also memories are located, the, the SGA components, you remember them. So memory and background processes are loaded at this stage. Once that is done, and that is okay, there is no problem with the initialization parameter files, then we move on to the second stage, which is the mount stage. In the mount stage, Oracle reads the control file. The work of the control file, remember in the previous discussion, we said it stores everything important about the database. So in the first stage, the software is open, is available, it is running, everything is okay. Now the second is focus majorly on the database, trying to open the database. The control file is the one in charge of knowing which database to open. It knows where to start from. Without it, we are doomed. That is why we said the control file is extremely, extremely important at this stage of opening the database. So you can see that. So you can now see the reason as to why we try to multiplex the control file. So once we have everything set in the control file, the database can now be associated with the instance. They have to work together. The instance is joined with the database. Remember the instance is opened in the first place. In the first stage when the background and memory are activated then in the second stage we are looking at the database being joined with the instance they have to work together when there is any problem at this stage of the mount the first suspect is the control file some of the activity that can be done at this stage we can enable and disable some archiving we can rename some database files and so much and so forth final stage which is the open stage all the database files are loaded and then the database is open and ready to be used. So those are the three stages. The normal stage is controlled by the initialization parameters that we find in the parameter files. Then the second stage is controlled by the control file. When 
we don't have the control file the instance cannot be joined with the database and they can't work together once the control file is okay then we can load all other database files and then the database is open at the open stage those are the three stages there are different ways of starting up the database and these are called the startup mode the startup open that is the first way or the first mode startup open that is the default way of opening up the database or the instance it goes through a normal process local database will move from no mount mount and then the open stage that is by default the moment you issue the startup command and you don't specify the mode you want to open the database in that is what will happen then we have the startup no mount the database will start and then it will stop at the no mount stage so sometimes we don't want the people to access our database we just there are some tasks we need to do like renaming files or anything or enabling archiving and we don't want anybody to access the database then we consider this option of starting up no mount then we have the startup mount that is the stage where the database is open up to the mount stage okay we don't want we don't allow people to access it but we stop at the mount stage okay to follow maybe some maintenance work on the database then we have the startup restrict the database is really open but it is only available to a few people who have what we call the restricted session privilege those are the only ones who can access and work with the database in other words you have to be with a card for you to be allowed to use the database then we have the startup read only the database is open but you cannot make change to any data in the database you can just see view but you cannot update you can't delete you can't insert anything into the database then we have the startup force maybe the database had some challenges that is when we use the startup force so those are the startup modes and so many others we cannot finish them just like the startup process we also go through a process when we are shutting down the instance of it so let's see the shutdown process with the shutdown process again you have to be if you need to shut down the database again you have to be a dba so you need to connect to the database as an administrator we begin with the shutdown command with the switch the off switch for the instance of the database the first stage of the shutdown process is the close stage with the close all the database files are closed and they are no longer accessible to users in other words everything is shut down the database is closed it's not is no longer it's no longer available to anyone that is the first stage it's called the closed stage then we move to the second one called the no mount stage with the no mount the instance is deassociated from the database so they are dismatched they are disjointed the instance goes back to its place then the data goes back to its place then the final stage in the shutdown we have shutdown oh, well it's interesting but it's shutdown stage that is when everything is shut down the background processes are stopped and memory is stopped when you carefully look at these stages the startup process and the shutdown process you just reverse the order of the startup process to get the shutdown process now there are also different ways of shutting down the instance or the database one is the shutdown normal but before you even look at these different ways the moment we issue a shutdown command no new connections are allowed to the database you cannot connect to the database the moment we are in the shutdown process so we have the first shutdown mode called the shutdown normal With the shutdown normal it is the default mode everything happens as it should be we begin from the close then and mark the shutdown process then shutdown stage that is the default when we don't specify the mode we want to use when shutting down the database it will just activate oracle will just activate the shutdown normal the shutdown normal it will wait for anyone who has connected to the database to disconnect whether they have anything they are doing or not it is the safest mode but the slowest just imagine you are waiting for somebody who's connected but they're not doing anything on the database that is time consuming but it is one of the safest modes then we have the shutdown transaction this is how it works it disconnects connected users from the database who are just idle they are not doing anything and it waits for those who are having something they are working on to complete the moment they complete 
or I could finish it the shutdown process. It is also a clean mode or a safe mode with a shutdown immediate. Or I could shut down the database immediately. It doesn't wait for anyone to disconnect or to finish transactions. It doesn't wait for anything. It just shuts down the database. So the beauty about this is uncommitted transactions are rolled back. With, so there is no need for us to recover, to perform a database recovery with this kind of mode. It's a wonderful one. When we need some urgent things we need to do with the database. Then finally we have the shutdown about which clothes the database instantly. It kills anybody who is there connected, whether you are doing anything or not. It acts the same way as the shutdown immediate. However, this one needs some recovery to be done because it doesn't roll back the uncommitted transactions. That is what we wanted to look at. The startup command, the startup process and the shutdown process, the startup modes and the shutdown modes. So let us look at the things in action. We are having our database here. It is up and running. Now we need to shut it down. Once I'm connected as an administrator, I can now issue a shutdown. When I don't specify the mode, whether a shutdown abort or a shutdown immediate or a shutdown, we have been seeing these modes. You saw me using these modes, some of these modes in the previous episode when I'm creating, when I'm multiplexing control files with the shutdown immediate. Now we are going to use the default shutdown. When we run, they say insufficient privileges. Wow, insufficient privileges. This means that, the, remember, system is an administrative account, but we are unable to shut down the database. Why? Even if it is an administrative account, not every administrator can close down the database. Very soon, you are going to be looking at the administrative accounts we have in Oracle. But this one is one of them, system. A system is less privileged. So we need to use the super administrative account for us to be able to start up and shut down the database. So this is the super user, the super administrative account called Sys. We shall be looking at these in details. You don't need to worry. So when I shut down now, the shutdown process starts. Database closed, meaning the database files are everything is closed. The database files are closed. They're no longer accessible. The database is shut down. Then the second stage is the database dismounted or the unmount stage or the dismount stage. The database it has been disassociated from the instance. And finally, you can see that the instance is now shut down. And when the instance is shut down, the database is also shut down. So when we connect, so when I try to connect using any other account, I cannot connect. And they're saying Oracle not available, shared memory room doesn't exist. It means I cannot access the database. It has been shut down. This is when I connect as a normal user. I can't do anything. We can now connect as an administrator again. And you can see that they are saying I'm connected to an idle instance. It means the database is down. When we see connected to an idle instance, it means the database is down. The instance is down. Nothing is there. So we need to start up the database. So we can start up the database by issuing the startup command. When you run, the instance is started. That is the first stage. The mount stage, the no mount stage. The instance is started, backup processes have been started. If you remember this screen, these are backup processes that have been started. Everything, the memory is working. Now two are saying database mounted. The database, this at this stage, they are reading the control files. The database mounted or the mount stage. The database is joined with the instance. Then finally, the database is open. So the control file is the one in charge of this stage. And finally, once we have all the files open, then the database is now open and available. So when I connect again as a normal user, I can now get connected because everything is fine. So that is how we connect. That is how we shut down and we start up the process of, that is how we manage the instance and everything about it. So that is what we had for this section. Let us meet in the next section for something else.